I'm Samant Prabhu, I'm chair of the uh, BCBS Specialty Conference uh, Committee. I'm Farah Sheikh, I'm vice chair of the BCBS Specialty Conference Committee. And we're here with uh, Dr. Joe Wu, who is uh, uh, director of the uh, Stanford Cardiovascular Institute and the immediate past president of the American Heart Association. Uh, thank you so much, Samantha. Thank you so much, Phil, for inviting me here. So we are here to have a, a conversation with the uh, uh, past president of the AHA. And um, maybe I can start off, Joe, by just asking you, you had the uh, unique perspective of being the president during the centennial year of the uh, AHA. And uh, I wonder if you could give us your just overall reflections on how this year uh, was important to the organization uh, how you used it to uh, further your vision and, and uh, your reflections on your accomplishments. Yeah, so thank you, Suman. So uh, as you pointed out, uh, June 10th, uh, 2024 happens to be our centennial. Uh, the AHA was founded June 10th, 1924. And in, in, a, in fact, um, it was actually founded um, in Chicago at the Drake Hotel by a social worker, Mayor Watley. And she had the vision of uh, bringing together um, healthcare workers who are involved in cardiovascular uh, health and cardiovascular science have come together and formed this great organization. And I think a year, a hundred years later, uh, AHA has achieved tremendously uh, well uh, in terms of all the uh, important aspects that are related to cardi uh, cardiology, uh, including healthcare delivery. Uh, health equity, uh, science, education. Uh, so it's a tremendous pleasure and honor for me to be, I guess it just happens at the right time, the right moment that I'm the centennial president. Uh, um, and I, th I think he, as you both of you know, I'm a, a physician scientist. I do, uh, I, I see patients, but I also do quite a bit of research. And I've always been interested in promoting and advancing uh, science. And, I think being on the centennial, uh, science, in my opinion, in my opinion, I think science really dictates the way how uh, AHA uh, and uh, you know cardiology in general, cardiovascular medicine in general, will proceed uh, in the next uh, 100 years. And having great science is the backbone of uh, all the discoveries that we are uh, making uh, to help our patients. Just think about the options that the patients have 100 years ago when they get a heart attack versus the options that the patients have today when they get a heart attack in terms of you know, pacemakers, uh, stents, surgeries, artificial valves, artificial hearts, uh, heart transplants, and so forth. None of those were, quote unquote, imaginable 100 years ago. But yet, 100 years later, through the work of uh, all the AHA volunteers and scientists, we're able to achieve that. And I think if you project 100 years from now, um, we at this moment cannot perceive what's going to happen 100 years ago. But I'm sure 100 years from now, as AHA celebrates its second centennial, we'll be able to reflect back and compare differences uh, that 100 years, additional 100 years have uh, made uh, over the next century. I wanted to interject. We know you as a leader in the field. You're uh, an amazing in stem cell disease modeling and things like that. How do you think this role as AHA president has shaped you to become a leader? Does it, do you feel like you learned anything um, about being a leader, sorry, uh, in this yeah. particular role? So I've been involved in AHA for, as both, it's the same as both of you. Uh, I was the, um, in fact, when I reflect back, I was at the BCBS at, at, uh, committee, program committee chair, and then the BCBS uh, council uh, chair, uh, and then the uh, AHA research committee chair for about four years. And during those four years, uh, I had the opportunity to serve on the AHA board. Um, and then the incoming president, the president, and the outgoing uh, president. So I've actually been on the board for about uh, six years. And uh, serving on the board uh, gives you great insight in terms of what AHA is doing. I think a lot of times when we sitting here as AHA volunteers, as AHA scientists, we're only thinking about how we're going to get the next grant. Uh, but 
setting the board allows you to get a sneak preview of what AHA is thinking in terms of its overall direction, what AHA wants to do in terms of the next five, 10 years, what AHA, how does AHA uh, drive its mission in terms of philanthropy and in terms of volunteerism. A lot of that stuff is um, I learned over the past uh, six, seven years. And I think over the past year, I think you learn more, uh, even more, just because uh, you serve on the role of the AHA president and understanding uh, the inside details of uh, what's going on. And I think it's uh, served me tremendously well because I now have a better perspective of how a uh, large organization, uh, a great organization like the AHA uh, runs. And I'm sure that it's going to help me uh, in the future in terms of strategizing uh, uh, some of my future uh, endeavors that I want to embark on. Yeah. Maybe I could segue on that. And um, I, I really appreciate your perspective of uh, the 30,000 foot view of the organization. Now, we're here at the BCVS meeting and you are one of the leaders in BCVS, so it really uh, is a source of pride for our council that you, uh, you uh, were the past president. Uh, and I'd like to bring it back to the, the, the BCVS community. How, being president of the AHA, understanding the broader goals and, and objectives of the entire group, how does it inform, well, first of all, your own science, and how should we view uh, our science uh, it, it being influenced by by these goals. What are the what are the priorities? What are the challenges that you've kind of taken away over the last year? And what kind of advice can you give to the BCVS community? Yeah, I think specific to the BCVS uh, community, um, I can tell you that the AHA um, in general, and also the AHA board specifically, uh, has tremendous respect. Um, on the AHA uh, BCBS. They respect us, uh, really. Uh, and what we say uh, means quite a bit to them. And so they look toward us in terms of what's hot in science and what's hot in research uh, in the cardiovascular uh, uh, community. I think um, the other thing I learned is that um, being vocal makes a difference. And so I would. Uh, recommend and suggest that uh, BCBS uh, be vocal in terms of what our needs are. And so the more you speak, uh, the more you get heard. Um, and just to give you an example, I think, um, you know, the AHA is, they're actually quite flexible and they do listen to suggestions. And uh, I, as you, both of you know, I've been quite vocal in terms of uh, advocating uh, for the early career trainees. So, so right now, our pay line for pre-docs and post-docs are 30%, right? And it's actually much higher than uh, than the uh, NIH funding uh, mechanisms. Our pay line for career development award is also 30%. Um, we've also initiated um, several programs in which, um, you know, we have a specific program for diversity supplements, very similar to the R01 uh, diversity supplements that I told them that I think it's important for us to have that. And they listen. They say, OK, let's implement it. We have a program in which are visiting scholars from across the world, uh, around the world, uh, can come and uh, visit uh, us in the US as a visiting uh, professor. They listen to that, and then they're fine with it. We also have a program in which uh, cardiology fellows and neurology fellows can come to our scientific sessions. Uh, it's paid for by the AHA, and uh, they listen to that. So the point is, if BCBS has great idea, and if idea makes sense, and you propose it uh, to the AHA, um, chances are that they're going to pick it up, and they're going to say, yeah, this, this makes sense. And so I would encourage us as a council to think about ways that uh, benefits us, and also think about ways that benefits uh, the AHA, and then propose uh, these submissions. I kind of had a very uh, a question related to, I've seen you in a lot of promotional stuff for AHA. Is there anyone that you met that was really <laughs> amazing to have met? And what do they think of you know, AHA and, and uh, maybe a celebrity, maybe someone that maybe is part of 
you know, uh, supporting AHA that you thought was a really great interaction? Well, uh, that's a tough, tough one. I think uh, we, you know, I've met uh, uh, quite a few number uh, of people over the, over the past uh, year. Um, no one in particular, but I guess uh, maybe one person I just want to highlight, maybe because I'm a, um, you know, because I'm a football fan, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we met uh, Roger Goodell, who was at the uh, AHA Centennial, and uh, Roger, he's been a tremendous uh, advocate and supporter uh, of uh, AHA, and I'm sure you, you know about the the uh, Ham, uh, Hamlin. Uh, you know, his uh, episode of cardiac arrest and the AHA has a lot of uh, partnership uh, with the uh, with the, the NFL. And um, that was, you know, that was kind of my highlight. I kind of joked about you, hey, can I serve as a team position for one of your teams, maybe the 49ers or something, yeah. That's a great story. Uh, maybe uh, fr from the stand, one of the most important things is uh, uh, beyond our scientific roles communicating what we are doing to to the rest of the public, and you've been in that public facing position. What advice would you give to individual scientists on how to how to promote or how to promulgate what what they're finding in terms of um, yeah. uh, public understanding? I, I think it's a um, and this is my own personal take. I, I think it's a fine line. Uh, sometimes uh, you don't want to. Go overboard and uh, make it look like uh, you are quote unquote arrogant or something and just promoting a lot. But at the same time, you can't be kind of meek and do nothing about it. So it's a fine line. And I think uh, as long as you're promoting science and uh, truthful science, uh, good science, and uh, you're doing it in a very uh, fair, objective way, and you're just trying to educate the public about the latest paper that you've done, the latest research, the latest discoveries that you've done, I think it's important uh, because after all, um, you know, you could do the best science, but as long as our public uh, doesn't understand it, it doesn't really help. And I think our role as uh, scientists, increasingly, increasingly, we have to narrow the gap between scientists and the lay uh, public. And I personally think that the BCBS, uh, both of you, uh, I've seen a lot of tweets from both of you, uh, have been doing uh, tremendously well in terms of uh, telling people what this BCBS as a community is doing. Uh, I've seen quite a bit of uh, tweets by Farah on the uh, gene therapy trials that you're doing for ARVD patients. And that raises the hope of uh, patients with ARVD and that raises uh, public attention. I've seen a lot of tweets uh, by you this month on the latest discoveries you guys are doing with inflammation and heart failure. Think about the number of people with heart failure and think about informing them that inflammation is important. And this is the kind of uh, thing that I think uh, is not just gonna drive uh, philanthropy, but also drive uh, the number of people who's gonna be committed to going to research because after all, we need our future generation of scientists who want to go into research. So having more visibility drives philanthropy, drives the number of uh, young investigators who want to go to research, have better research, and in the end, uh, have better therapies for ARVD, better therapies for heart failure. So I'm a um, strong uh, vocal advocate of having more publicity of what BCBS research is doing. Maybe I could ask one final question. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> what are you the most proud of in terms of your years, Brendan? What am I most proud of? Uh, well, putting on my hat as a BCBS hat, I was tremendously uh, overjoyed to hear that um, during my tenure, I think I talked to John Pathakan yesterday, that the BCBS is number one in terms of paid membership. I think I've been BCBS uh, for a BCBS member for about 20 years, and you know it's been like number four, number three, number two, and I've always been pushing us and say, why don't we just keep going because we're very uh, small numbers between us and number one, just keep going. And I'm very, very proud, very happy that this year we overtook uh, uh, neurology and claim cards to become number one in paid membership. Yeah, I think it's a testament to your advocacy for science. Absolutely. So uh, yeah. we uh, we. Thank you for the for the conversation and congratulations on a terrific year last year and 
the next years to come. Thank you, Sumanth. You guys are what make me look good, make me look proud. Uh, thank you, Sumanth. Thank you, Farah.